Hey folks, Nikos here after a long break. I've got a real good treat for you coming up. This is how to build a full stack serverless application on top of AWS. Now, I'm going to be using a tutorial called Serverless Stack because AWS is quite a large thing to get your head around. Now, this is the tutorial here. You can find it at serverlessstack.com. Now, the best way to do this tutorial, of course, is to do the tutorial, which means reading through this tutorial, which is like 300 plus pages. But it's one of those rare tutorials where it's actually made so that anybody can understand it. And uh, as there's so many screenshots, the guy's done a lot of work, you know. So this is what you want to check out. Got some really good uh, feedback here. So you can download the tutorial or you can just go through the, uh, the website by going through all these. Um, I recommend the web version because it's easy to copy and paste code into your various systems. So what you have to do is you have to basically go through, create an AWS account, and then you create an IAM user. I'll just go and open some of these up for you. So an, an IAM user is like users that you can create and then you can give certain permissions to them. So for this tutorial, tutorial you create an IAM user with an admin property. So what you do is you go to I am and then you create a user and you give him an admin, administrative uh, permission and then you use that permission inside of your console and also the serverless framework which we'll, we'll get onto. This is not actually the user you use uh, when the user logs in, you, you use other things for this. So this tutorial really goes through um, some of the documentation, explains how things work because it's kind of, the documentation on AWS is very good, but sometimes it's a bit too condensed. So for people getting started, start out, um, even for programmers, you know, um, this tutorial really helps explain uh, a lot about it. So anyway, in the tutorial, you create, a, you create this user and then you configure the CLI, which you use to programmatically access AWS. So one of the first things in the tutorial they tell you to do is to create a DynamoDB table. So you go into, basically you can go up to here and you can like, you know, this is the DynamoDB, you can search for things in here. And then you can also drag and drop, uh, you know, items up into this, this sort of, if you click the pin here, you can pin things that you normally work with, which is quite useful. So in our tutorial, we create a DynamoDB table to hold the, the notes. So the notes are basically something that the application uses uh, for, for data storage, and it's a DynamoDB. So if we click on notes, then you, you, you can see that there's a, well, in the tutorial, we actually you create a table from scratch. So it explain, basically the tutorial explains uh, what kind of keys you want to use. So here's the table that I set up in the tutorial. Again, in the tutorial, it takes you through every single screenshot and point of the creating the table. So we also have to create an S3 bucket. So we create an S3 bucket uh, by clicking on the, going to S3 buckets from the services. So S3. And we create one for notes, which is going to, um, it's going to hold the, the uploads. We just use default settings. And after we create a bucket, we create a cognito user pool. So a cognito user pool is a bunch of users that can be saved uh, inside of um, Amazon Cognito as, as user a password and uh, usernames. And then these users can be used for different app clients within AWS. App client is like, uh, think of it just as an, as an application that can be used with a bunch of users. So this is the user I created for this application, the user pool. And these are the attributes. It explains it in the tutorial how to do it. Uh, I also create oh you also I also created an app client for this pool uh, which I also use uh, in the tutorial. So if we go back to our cognito here and the tutorial okay 
So once we create user pool, we then set up the serverless framework. So basically for this one, I just copied the thing of the GitHub repo. And this is what the GitHub repository has in there for you guys. So basically we create these um, Lambda functions. I create a note. So we're getting some data and we're creating this item, data content, and we're pushing into the DynamoDB table, this data. And then the serverless YAML file, we are using, uh, these, are, these are our handlers, Lambda functions. So for our Lambda functions, for the back end, we're using AWS IAM as authorizer. So what that means is that we have some policy file and we assign a role to the logged in user to be able to see whether or not they can use this API. Look, again, the tutorial covers all this stuff in detail. Uh, it would take me literally hours to go through every point on how, how this works. Let's just visit one of them. So the, the tutorial takes you through all the points if you want to go through it manually. And it explains what all the things are in this. Please bear with me, I've got a bit of a cold today, but I wanted to make this video because it's been a while. So you, you create the APIs and you deploy the API with serverless framework using S serverless deploy. And I'll upload all this stuff uh, in these functions into your console. So API gateway. So if we go to our London region, so we, when you upload this stuff, uh, we're using prod. And so let's, this is the one here. So these are all these are lambda functions here that we create in here. So you can go and play with that. Uh, what else do we do? So once we deploy our backend lambda functions, we create this cognito identity pool. So we go in here, manage man, manage federated identities, and then we create an identity pool for our application. So we link it. Uh, we link it to our user pool in this one. Um, so the one I made before was this one here. So I actually have two users because two users are registered in the app. I'll show you the app in the next video. And uh, we authenticate against our usual pool which we created previously. Again, explained in the tutorial. So once that's all done, you then can test the API and that's done via a tool that you can download and you basically plug in all the settings into it like this and then you get like when it executes, you get a response back like that. So that is uh, a very extremely fast overview of the back end part of that app. Um, any questions, please ask in the video comments below and I look forward to showing you the react part of the video next. So thanks for watching. Bye.